In the previous video, we talked about how to formulate a linear program model for the Captain Wise packing problem. As you can see over here, I copy and paste the original mathematical LP model over here just for convenience. And I save it in my uh, worksheet number one in my Excel file. I renamed my worksheet number one to LP model. And in worksheet number two, which I renamed to Excel model, I'm gonna formulate the Excel model for this problem and solve this model for the optimal solution using Excel solver. All right, let's jump right to the Excel model. There are many, many different ways of organizing the data, the information you need in Excel model. So this is a format I choose to use. And you see I add a lot of comments just for well, convenience and also for readability. Chances are you are going to go back to your model maybe say a few months later and with those comments you can understand what you did a couple of months ago. And it's also good for other readers who are going to read your Excel file. All right, let's take a look what we have in this Excel model. Well, as you can see over here, I have the unit profits for each of the four commodities over here, unit volume, and in this matrix highlighted in yellow, I'm going to store all my 12 decision variables, FR, FS, all the way to AT. Okay, for example, in this cell, which is cell D7, I'm going to keep the decision variable FR. At the beginning, well, they are zero by default when they are empty. And later on, the solver will tell us what's going to be the optimal amount of rice to buy and store in the forward cargo hold. And those in Blue are where the constraints are. We have all kinds of different constraints, which I'm going to talk about in a few minutes. And this one highlighted in green, that's where our objective function is. But let's take it slow one thing at a time. So you see in our objective function, we need what? The total amount of rice we're going to buy, total amount of sugar we're going to buy. In addition, we're going to formulate the availability constraint later on anyway. So in G column, I create a uh, subtotal, uh, which is the uh, total times of rice, sugar, iron ore, and trinkets we're gonna buy. And to do that in Excel, that's pretty easy. We're gonna use the sum function, SUM. And then select all those three numbers. They are FR, CR, and AR. So the sum of those three will give us the total times of rice Captain Wise is going to buy. And then in Excel, I can copy and paste the formula this way. So in cell G8, that's total times of sugar we're going to buy. And in G9 and G10, our total times of iron ore and trinkets we're going to buy. And you can double check the formula by clicking each of those cells. You can see the formula right here. Okay. Now let me formulate the objective function. We see that over here. 800 times sum of FR, CR, and AR plus all the way to 2500 times the sum of FT, CT, and AT. And just now, we got what? We got the sum of FR, CR, and AR over here in G7, and the sum of FT, CT, and AT in cell G10 already. It makes the whole thing a lot easier for us. And here, I'm going to formulate the objective function. And one way you can do is that the objective function total profit will be equal to what? 800 which is in cell A7 times the total times of rice we're going to buy, which is in cell uh, G7. But I'm going to instead 
formulating the total profit function in an easier and faster way. You saw that already. I'm going to use a function called sum product. So let me start from scratch. Sum product. Okay, that's the function I'm going to use. Okay, sum product of what? Actually, two matrices. One is the unit profit matrix. Okay, that's a, a uh, four by one matrix. And what about the total times uh, each of the four commodities? They are also uh, four by one matrix. So what we're going to do is that okay, use the function sum product of two matrices. One is the coefficient matrix, and the other is the uh, total tonnage matrix. And this function sum product does one thing, like I said earlier, it is equal to a hundred times sum of fr, cr, and ar plus all the way to 2500 times the sum of ft, ct, and at. All right, now all those numbers are zero because all those 12 decision variables by default are zero in Excel. So it's not a surprise all those totals and total profits are also zero. And that's the uh, objective function. All right, what about total weight? Okay, total weight in forward, center, and after cargo hold. And very similar to what we did earlier, we are going to use the sum function in Excel. So this is nothing but the sum of FR, FS, FO, and FT. That is the total times of cargo in the forward cargo hold. Return right now is zero by default, and we can copy and paste the formula to get the total times of cargo in center and after cargo hold. And later on in solver, we're going to formulate the constraints based on weight capacity. And next, we are going to calculate the total volume of cargo in each of the three cargo holds. To do that, we are going to use sum product function once again. Sum product of what? Well, the coefficient matrix is the uh, unit volume of each cargo. The decision variable are the tons of rice, sugar, iron ore and trinkets in the forward cargo hold. So this function gives us what? 60 times FR plus 48.6 times FS plus 4.1 times FO and plus 240 times FT. That's exactly what we want. The total volume of cargo in the forward cargo hold. Let's click return. Okay, here I want to bring to your attention one thing. And we are going to copy and paste the formula once again by click and drag it. But be careful. We have to use something we call absolute cell reference. Adding dollar signs in front of B7 and B10. Here's why. When we are calculating the uh, total volume in center cargo hold, for example, the unit volume matrix remains the same in cell B7 all the way to cell B10. And if we do not add the dollar signs using absolute cell reference, when we click and drag the uh, formula to cell E15 and F15, the unit volume matrix will switch as well to C7 to C10 and D7 to D10 as well. That is not something we would like to see. Okay, so I'm going to add dollar signs. A convenient way to add dollar sign is by clicking F4 if you are using a PC. All right. And let me show the comments over here.
This is the total volume of cargo in a forward cargo hold. And then click and drag. Let's say you click cell E15. What do you see over here? Some product of dollar B, dollar seven, dollar B, dollar ten. So the first unit volume matrix remains the same. That's something you don't want to change. On the other hand, you are changing what? You are changing the decision variable matrix. Instead of using F R F S F O F T, we would like to use C R C S C O and C T. They are in cell E7 to E10 respectively. That is exactly what we want. All right. So let's take care of that. And then let's look at the train constraints. Okay. For convenience, I typed the uh, train constraint one and two over here already. So to get that is very easy. So the first one will be equal to two times the sum of FR, FS, FO, and FT. And where is it? That's the total times of cargo in forward cargo hold, right? So that is nothing but cell D11 minus sum of CR, CS, CO, and CT, which is in cell E11. That's it. Okay. And trim constraint number two, it's equal to three times the sum of AR, AS, AO, and AT minus sum of CR, CS, CO, and CT. Three times where is our AR plus AS, AO, and AT? They are in cell F11 minus sum of CR, CS, CO, and CT. They are in cell E11. That's it. It took us a while to formulate the Excel model for us. And now we are ready to launch Excel Solver. And I'm using Microsoft Office 2013, so my solver is under Data tab. I click Data, you see Solver, and if this is first time you use Solver, uh, please check my other videos and see how to install and use Solver. Okay, here I'm just going to go ahead and launch my Solver. All right, we see a pop-up window named solver parameters. First item we need to take care of is the objective. Well, our objective is nothing but the total profit. Where is it? It is in cell E4. I'm just going to click it. So objective is changed to E4 automatically. What do we want to do about it? Maximize it, of course. The default option is maximization. By changing variable cells. And that's where we tell Excel where are our decision variables. We have 12 of them, right? So we are going to click and select the 12 cells that contain our decision variables. It's from D7 all the way to F10. That's it. Okay. Now let's turn to constraints. We're going to add one group at a time. Doesn't matter which one you want to go first. All right. For example, let's try availability constraint first. I click add. I get add constraint pop up window. What is cell reference? The cell reference is, in our case, total tons of rice, sugar, iron ore, and trinkets we are going to buy. And they are no more than availability on this island. Availability or the constraints are in cell I7 to I10. Basically, by doing something like this, we are telling Excel that we have four availability constraints. The amount of rice we buy got to be no more than 200 all the way to the amount of trinkets we're going to buy got to be no more than 50 times. And that's it, our availability constraints. Since we have more constraints to add, we're going to click Add. Otherwise, we're going to click OK. So let's click Add. All right? 
Next, let's look at weight constraints. And the total tons of cargo in forward, center, and after cargo holds must be less than or equal to their respective weight capacities. And they are 75, 150, and 50 in cell D13 to F13. And that's our weight capacity constraints. And we're going to click Add again because we have more constraints to add. All right. The third group we are going to consider is the uh, volume capacity constraints. In cell reference, we are going to add total volume of cargo in forward, center, and after cargo hold. And they are no more than the volume capacity of 4,000, 10,000, 7,000 cubic feet, respectively, in each of those three cargo holds. And let's click Add one more time because we're going to have trim constraints to worry about. All right. The two trim constraints are in cell D19 and E19, respectively. And they have to be equal to zero, as we see over here. So I'm going to change this to zero. Let's know equal to is the default option, equal is the second option, and there are some other options like greater than or equal to, integer, binary, and so on and so forth. And I'm going to choose equal to constraint, well, it's going to be equal to zero. I can just type zero there. And that's it. That's all the constraints we had. Let's click OK. Oh, you may wonder, what about non-negative constraints? Well, that is the easiest thing to take out. Look at this checkbox. Make unconstrained variables non-negative. So to take care of the non-negative constraints, all we are going to do is to check this box. Done. And then we're going to select a solving method. And this is a linear programming model, so we're going to use simplex linear programming method. That's it. Now we're ready to go. Let's click Solve. Here we go. We found the optimal solution and the optimal profit associated with it. Okay, so in Solve result, if you would like to keep more information like answers and studio re reports, please feel free to do so. But here I'm just going to well, I select all of them and keep solver solution only. What does it tell us? Okay, it looks like we are not going to buy any sugar. And uh, we are going to buy up to 200 tons of rice. And they are stored in each of the three cargo holds. And we are going to buy 36.8 tons of trinkets. And they are going to be stored in center and after cargo holds, respectively. The resulting profit will be about $260,000. That's the best we can do. The highest possible profit Captain Wise can possibly make. And why do we not buy more products or commodities? Because of the weight and the volume capacity constraints. See, we use up all the weight capacity and we use up all the volume capacity as well and that's the best we can do